Hey everybody, Aaron from God a Minute, Christy here, what's up? So, the title of this video, Why Would a Loving God Send People to Hell? And really, the better question is, why would a person reject the free gift of salvation? Of eternal life. Yeah, and so again, the question is, why would a person reject the free gift of salvation or eternal life? And so we have some illustrations here, and then we'll chat a little bit. So. Yeah. I've got a set of keys that's going to get you to your destination. You're promised to get there. It's free. It's a gift. What are you going to do? Okay, she denies the first I want your dang keys. You're hungry. You are you haven't eaten in 40 days. It's free. You can have it. What are you going to do? Okay. Illustration number three. I've paid your, your fee. I paid for your penalty. You just got to take it. What are you gonna do? All right. See how this theme is going here with the illustration here? Glass of water. Living water. You only can last, what, what do they say, what, three days without water? Well, you haven't drank in three days? There it goes. <laughs> I missed it. See you later. Nothing that carpet cleaner can't get out. It's just water. Light. The world is a dark place. I'm giving you the light. You can take this and you can see clearly. <laughs> gone why would a person deny all these free gifts that jesus provides is it is it is it god sending people to hell or is it people declining the free gift of salvation the free gift of eternal life romans 1 uh, starting in verse 18 for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are uh, without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts. Were, dark, were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. It goes on and on in this area, but this passage is really telling us that everybody on this planet is left without excuse. They were given, they were given a chance to take the free keys, take the free cash, take the free bread. Take the payment. Take, take the all. bread of life. Take the living water. Take the light of the world. But? Take the key to the door. Uh, they declined it. Nah. And so people are left with that excuse. Here's another passage that I wanted to bring up to. And uh, that's in Matthew 28, verse 17. It's one of those verses that can really be easily be skipped over, but it's an important one. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Okay, so this is right after Jesus dies on the cross. He raises from the grave. He walks around. People see him. And not only did he die on the cross and resurrect, but healed and perform miracles and read people's thoughts and everything before this, right? So on top of all those miracles in their sights and knowing their thoughts. They're seeing the Son of God. They're seeing the Son of God in, in real time. They were actually there, available, witnessing the Son of God being crucified and seeing all the miracles. And it says, but some doubted. They had all the evidence of the world. They, they were there. Any, everybody in the history of humanity would have traded their life to be there, to witness it, just to prove it. But they still didn't believe. So the reality is we have um, the evidence in the nature. We have evidence in our life. As There has been uh, many opportunities for you to trust and believe in the name of Jesus. But it's all in your hands. It's all, mm -hmm. it's all your choice. Which way are you going to decide to go? And so the question, why would a good God send people to hell? The answer is he doesn't. People choose to go to hell. You, it's a choice. He doesn't send anyone there. Hell wasn't created for us. It was created for Satan and the demons and the darkness. But it's like a lifeboat comes along. Get on the lifeboat and you're like, nah, that's okay. I want to be saved, but you keep your lifeboat, right? So God doesn't send people to hell. People choose to go there by rejecting an absolute, perfect, no-strings-attached free gift. I'll read this parable. 
there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and uh, fared subtentuously every day. This is Luke 7, sorry, Luke 16, uh, verse 19 and on. This is the rich man of Lazarus. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was, the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, here's the big one. Therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them. At least they also come to this place of torment. And Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. This parable is saying there's enough evidence. Mm -hmm. There's enough evidence. You you have enough information here on planet Earth, especially in this year, uh, 2023, going into 2024 at the time of this recording. There's enough evidence for you to know. Pick which side you're on. And uh, dig. The answers are there. Ask your questions. And they're all there. They, and the reality is Jesus is the answer. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This video is an example of getting the keys mm -hmm. and getting the answer. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do? Are you going to accept it, the invitation, or are you going to reject it? Are you going to slap it out of your hand? Any other thoughts? That's basically it. So I would just, again, change that question. Why would a loving God send people to hell? The, the question is, why would anybody in their right mind decline the free gift of salvation or eternal life in heaven? I'll leave that with you. Go, Jesus, go. See in the clouds. We are one, one day, day closer. closer. I hope to see you up there soon. Hallelujah, I'll see.